got, um, I guess Vogue, you know, Anna Wintour runs Vogue and she's the one who does the Met Gala and they followed AOC behind the scenes as she was getting ready in her stupid tax the rich dress. You know, <laughs> she's really sticking it to the man by wearing that dress as she licked the boots of the yeah. billionaires left and right. But like when people see this woman who's trying to claim that she's a socialist, she wants to impose these socialist policies on us and everybody's kids has to be masked because it's the right thing to do, you know, do your part. Meanwhile, like look at these women on their knees in the masks as they adorn her with the proper fixins uh, on her dress and her hair and her, her. OK, when they see that, when they see people like the San Francisco mayor, London Breed, did you see? Mm, yeah. Did you see yeah. that video? Again, and yeah. the dancing in the nightclub. I had a great time. No, I'm not going to pull my mask up. I'm not going to sip and put my mask on. I think, do we have that soundbite? Let's watch this. The San Francisco mayor. During a mask mandate that applies while you're inside. I had a good time at the Black Cat. And I think it's sad that um, this is even a story. You know, I was there. I was eating. And I was drinking. And I was sitting with my friends. And everyone who came in there was vaccinated. So the fact that we have turned this into a story about being maskless, no, I'm not going to sip and put my mask on, sip and put my mask on, sip and put my mask on, eat and put my mask on. While I'm eating and I'm drinking, I'm going to keep my mask off. I had a good time at the Black... Okay. Can I just tell you? So, like, uh, uh, of course, you and I agree with her. That's exactly right. I don't want to have the mask Absolutely. on at all. Never mind. Put it up in between bites. It's ridiculous. But I just had to do that on my on my flight down to Houston for a convention with Dan Crenshaw. I had to do it. I had to put it up. And look at her. Here, sh here are pictures of her in the nightclub. She she's dancing. She's not eating. She's not drinking. She's dancing. She's on the dance floor having a good time without her mask while she forces all of her constituents to keep their masks on. They're not allowed into the black cat. And to take their mask off, only she can do it because the rules don't apply. Look at this to our elite leaders. And she's totally unapologetic about it. Meanwhile, the kids in San Francisco masks all day once they can finally get their asses into school because they've been out of school for the better for the entire last year. And now it's spotty. Dude, people should be angry. People should be absolutely livid. But again, this isn't new. They've been doing it the whole time. Uh, yeah, the Gavin Newsom's been doing it. Uh, uh, Bowser in in DC, she was she's been doing it. Uh, you know, they're all over the place. Uh, Lightfoot in Chicago, she did the same thing. And like you said, every time they always have excuses. Oh well, you know, the, the I was drinking or yeah, you know, I was eating. I would. This doesn't apply to me. Uh, whereas if it were us, if it were me or you. Uh, then the hammer would come down on us. Oh, you want to, mm -hmm. you want to kill grandma. You want, you want to kill the kids. Oh no, you're, you're a horrible person. And there's, so the double standards. Now you ask if I thought it was, there was at a, that whether we're at a breaking point. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I would hope so. I would, I would hope so. And not that I want to see things collapse, but um, more and more people are starting to speak out and more and more people are starting to push back against this stuff. And um, I work in healthcare, and there's been a bunch of nurses in my area who have been uh, protesting the, the vax mandates and and everything that's been going on. So we're seeing more and more of that more and more of that happen. Um, so it's, uh, it's not that I want to see it collapse. I just want to see people wake up. I don't want to see people recognize that we're being manipulated. And, mm -hmm. you know, and Jesse Kelly always says the people who are telling you to be afraid of coronavirus are not afraid of coronavirus, <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. we should follow their example. She can go, she can go out and have fun. She can go out and, and celebrate. Obama can has, have his parties and, and do whatever he wants to do. They can have the Met Gala and the Emmy Awards and do whatever. So let's go do that too. Let's take mm -hmm. the mask off the kids and, you know, let's, let's just make our own personal decisions about what's best for ourselves. And then let's move on. And, okay, but and let me ask you as a practical matter. Us. As a practical matter, how does that work? Because I, I'm with you, 100% I'm with you. And yet I want my children to continue going to school. And if I send them without a mask, they're going to get bounced right out. And I want to go into the various restaurants and I'm not allowed unless I show in, that, in New York a vaccine card and have a mask on. You know, I, I, I don't really want to be the person in the YouTube video who, you know, gets punched or gets in a fight because I right. refuse to comply. I don't really want to have a fight at all, but I don't like, I, I like the idea of civil disobedience. And yet realistically, am I going to do that with my kids in school or, you know, not buy my groceries to do it? I don't think so.
Yeah, it's a tough call. It, it is because people are losing their jobs and things like that. So there's there's a real risk. Uh, there's there's real sacrifice associated with it. And anytime you have authoritarianism, any, anytime you're dealing with tyranny, it's going to be like that. Um, so it, again, it's, it's a personal decision uh, that needs to be made, uh, in, you know, what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not willing to tolerate. Like, like I said, uh, this, uh, there's a lot of nurses that are that are protesting the vax mandate and they're facing uh, they're facing termination. They're facing being fired from their jobs. And let me um, ask you something. Let me ask you something, because this is one area in which uh, status as, you know, a, um, a disenfranchised group, a minority group does nothing for you. Right. Because we used to we heard first yeah. about how it was very important to get everybody vaccinated. Then you had a lot of objections in particular from the black community and there was no special dispensation. And now we have a situation in New York where you, there's all these videos coming out of a white hostess or a white waiter kicking out black patrons of these restaurants and get out, get out. You don't have a vaccination card. And suddenly this whole like, oh, you know, we've got to understand there's been a history in the black community of distrust of vaccines and so on. No, it's the the white workers saying get out to the black people. And I, ha- I haven't heard boo from these groups who have been ta- talking about, you know, systemic racism and so on. I mean, mm. it seems like covid trumps identity. Absolutely. Ibram Kendi has been very quiet lately about this. It's just kind of interesting because, right. you know, his whole his whole stick is that any system that creates disparate impact uh, in between races, then that's a racist system. So mm-hmm. uh, vaccines, may, I forget what the percentage is, but there's a large percentage, much, much larger percentage of, of black people who are unvaccinated. Uh, So you're shutting them out of society now, saying they can't go to restaurants or bars or, you know, whatever. And so according to Ibram Kendi, that should be considered a racist system. (laughs) But Mm -hmm. no, they're they're very, very quiet. And and, uh, I don't know, Megan, what I normally say about it is that they they don't have they don't the people who adhere to these kind of things, they don't seem to have actual principles. It's they don't believe anything that they say. They just know what they can use in the moment to manipulate other people. So if today racism is about control, control, right. So if today racism has the power, then I'm going to use that against you. If if it's vaccines today that has the power, then I'm going to use that against you. And then, so whatever I believed yesterday or said, I believed yesterday, all of that's out the window. None of that matters. It's only what I can use today right now in the moment to manipulate you and, and like you said, control and exert power over you. And you see that with everything. You see that with uh, race, the critical race theory. Uh, you see it with uh, gender. You see it with, uh, you see with the COVID stuff. You see, I mean, think about it. Uh, how many times have we heard that uh, healthcare is a right and we need universal healthcare for everybody. And now all of a sudden, it's okay to kind of push out this idea that maybe we should deny healthcare to unvaccinated people. It's like, <laughs> Where, right. uh, how can you, I thought it was a right. Hold, yeah. How can you hold both ideas at once? There was a landlord in, in Florida that said that uh, he was he was going to evict people for being unvaccinated and Occupy Democrats retweeted that tweet and said, yeah, yeah, if you retweet this, if you support it, we support this guy. It's like now all of a sudden the, the progressive wing is supporting landlords and, and eviction. 